would you? So you want a frost scrape. I'm going to be getting this calf hide up on a frame over the next few days and I'm going to try to get as much of it thinned out as possible and I'll be showing you the steps as I do so. This is a, um, a calf, a bull calf hide that I strung up on the frame in the fall and I shaved all of the hair off really closely and I mostly, I fleshed it and I did get some of the membrane off but not too much. You can see there's still some more membrane that I want to get off when it's strung up on the frame for frost scraping. Um, but all the hair is shaved off. And it's all done really close, which is a, that'll make the scraping so much easier. So this hide was fully dried and I had it rolled up um, in the woodshed over a pile of wood. And I'm going to be soaking it overnight um, and into most of the next day tomorrow to rehydrate it. So this is where it's gonna go overnight, just in a nice tub. Okay, so this has been bathing and soaking all night. Um, I'm thinking these white parts aren't um, are, aren't wet enough, so I want to keep it soaking until it all looks blue like so this. Today, while it's still not freezing cold, I'm going to put the hide on, and then it should freeze really nicely overnight, and and then it will be ideally really great to frost scrape in the morning. So I've had this hide soaking for two nights. Um, almost two days and it's looking really nice the color when I checked it yesterday was still a little bit chalky or a little bit like opaque in places and now it looks way more evenly translucent so here's what I'm doing to get set up to string up this hide I don't have an indoor working space for hide work so everything I do I do outside so I've got my frame. It's elevated, so it's off the ground. I have something on the snow to keep the snow from getting too much onto the hide. I have got strings on tops, uh, the top, bottom, and sides ready to go. And then I have another bag of strings here, um, and those are all ready to go. The hide is still in water. I'm going to keep water there in case it starts to freeze. Previous times I've done this in the winter, I use those lined um, kind of neoprene or coated gloves for this because the, the hide is cold and it's wet and um, that works but my hands do get cold and then I always end up just taking them off and using my bare hands anyways. But this year I've discovered or finally thought to use like vinyl disposable gloves. So I did that for a hide uh, a few weeks ago and it was amazing. My hands almost didn't even feel cold. And I'm, it also because it's not super freezing right now, uh, it should be okay to do this and not too uncomfortable. Okay, it's strung up on the four ends or four sides and now to get the rest of it on if it starts to get too frozen at some point if i get take too long um i'm going to pour water on it that's why i have this and a bucket and so this is where it really comes in handy to have uh hide buddies okay so move the frame and watch as the little mushrooms go by I see. Oh, no, let's go, let's go, Winask. Let's go, go Winask. Oh, no, we need a I didn't say it wasn't talking to you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. go on, dogs. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Hi. this all strung up I did just slip knots on the edges and it's starting to freeze up in spots so I'm going to pour water all around the edges again and then go around and tighten the ropes up and then I'll be done for the night one more and wash the snow off okay. 
have ready for tomorrow. Hide is a pretty, pretty much a frozen solid, a frozen sheet right now. And so with all the water that it absorbed while it was soaking up and rehydrated, it's got lots of water retained in the, in the hide. And that's what we want. We want that water nice and frozen and we want to scrape it, um, essentially uh, shaving the ice that's in the that's in the hide. That's my understanding of it. That's how it makes sense to me when I think about why this works so well. And we want to work this hide until it's thinned out enough um, before it dries out. So I kind of have one day where it's really nice and cold like this and I'm hoping to just go uh, until it's until I've got it to a spot where I'm really where I'm happy with, with it and it's nice and thinned out. So I tried to make those last night. Um, and I, I feel like I got a good edge on them. Hill stuffing is something I'm not very comfortable with, but I gotta do it. So let's see how it goes. we want to get to kind of this white layer down there white brown layer I think aren't those pretty <laughs> this kind of in stages. I did the middle row, I started doing that row, and I'm standing there. And eventually when I get to there, I'll have to flip it, um, flip the frame. It's going really well. You can see I've got all the hairs off kind of everywhere. You can see here, I've uh, taken off the majority of the hair on the bottom side from what I had left up yesterday. And I used a small scraper for that. And it, this scraper, I can get really nice and sharp with a sharpening stone and it keeps its edge really well. And so I'm able to get lots of these layers off really nicely, but it has this it ends up leaving a lot of grooves in the hide because it's um, because of the shape of the blade. Um, so I had my dad work on filing and toning up my axe head scraper yesterday and he did a really great job. And so what I'm going to do is do like a tag team with both of the scrapers. So I'm going to see how it's still quite messy here. So I'm going to use the axe head scraper, which has a much rounder or much more, I don't even know how to say it, gradual curve on it and use it to smooth out the grooves and get the rest of this remaining hair off. Um, tried it a little bit and it seems to be working well. Sure, 
done here. That's where I've gone over it with the axe head. This is where I still need to go. You see what I mean about these grooves? Um, so they're all over here from my scraping yesterday. And here's a spot where I went over it with the axe. So that's my goal is to get it all to this nice, smooth um, stage. And then see how there's still some notches there? I might turn it, turn the frame and then go this way on it. Okay, look at all the shavings that are here from, um, what about a quarter, three quarters of the hide. Now I use a tarp under my hide and then I collect all the shavings, put them in a bin and then I take it back to the bush. Um, I've been taught not to take animal parts to the dump. They should go back to where they lived. So that's what I do. Um, Okay, so I went over all of this with my with my round scraper and then over all the areas I already scraped with my axe head scraper and it's really smoothed it out a lot. It's really nice. So I'm going to tidy up, clean this all up and then flip it and get the rest of scraped. Here goes. From this angle you can really see how much I've gotten done already. of what you want your hide to sound like when you're frost scraping. Okay? I think anything less and it might not be working uh, as good. I've scraped all of this with my round scraper and I'm gonna going over it with my axe head so smoothing out so it'll all look like that um, yeah so before after this is an area where I'm gonna be spending a little bit more time it's the back uh, it's always so thick here uh, and the hair is so thick you can see I had a really hard time getting the, the hair off um, it's a pretty neat spot in the moose, um, so I'm going to try to thin it out as much as I can. side of the hide now the, so the flesh side um, I'm gonna work on scraping some of that off really need to tackle this fatty piece of the back by the neck uh, that's the hump um, but really there's not much work to do on the membrane side you want to get um, yeah just a thin layer of membrane off I haven't cross scraped membrane since last winter so I forget how it goes I'm, I'm gonna be remembering as I'm doing this um, and for this, for this part, I'm going to use my axe head scraper most of the time. I'm hoping that it's still cold enough that everything will come off nice. Um, because I really don't want to leave any, any grooves in this part. I want it just to be nice and smooth. 
And also on this part, we don't want to um, thin it out anymore. If you need to thin out the hide, you want to be th thinning it out on the hair Speaking side. Speaking of the hair side, I want to do a little bit more work after I'm done with the membrane. And I want to scrape... Um, I can't even show you how to do um, what I mean. Okay. I want to scrape this way. So um, perpendicular to the way I was scraping. And that will just, I think, help to smooth out some of the, the notch marks that come into the hide when scraping. Okay, right away you can see what I need to get off. I need to get all that kind of gunky stuff off and it comes off like this. Okay, so here's that really thick membrane. I just honed the ax. Um, what I find with membrane is I have to clean the blade so much more than I do on the hair side. Um, it just gets stuck to, to the blade. See that? You gotta clean it off frequently. So I tried um, scraping the membrane off of an elk hide I had that I had let to dry. It's been on the frame since the fall and um, I didn't get results anywhere near as good as this um, after the elk hide had dried. So I'm really glad I'm getting to this today. I really need to figure out a new way to, a uh, new technique for cleaning my blade. That's, I'm going to cut through and could easily cut through to my thumb. This is also a good time to talk about the importance of doing a good skinning job with a hide. So this is actually a hide that I skinned. Uh, I got a call late one night, not too late, but saying uh, a friend of mine got a moose, a little calf, and they could bring it home and winch it up in their garage and then I could go skin it. So my son and I packed up uh, and we went over and did that. And, and so this was the first animal I've skinned while it was hanging. I've skinned one other calf while it was in a ditch. Um, and I did most of the work by myself. I had some help with moving legs around for this, but um, the hunter really let me um, take the lead with skinning. And I'm really thankful for that. It was a really good experience. So I'm gonna go around and show you the mix that I did. So this is in the butt. Um, I think it was hanging by its legs, by its hind legs, so it was really kind of hard for me to reach. And I didn't know what I was doing. I really need to research these things before I can go and do them, um, but I don't. There's another neck, right there, um, right there. And that might be one too. So comparing this to an elk hide, that I just worked on that had so many nicks on it. And the nicks really go and they they affect the, the strength of the hide. They have this, they create weak spots. It actually makes it harder to, um, to, what am I trying to say? To shave the hair off, because the hair gets thin and if you try to shave it off, it might go into the hide. So it's really, that's, it's really important to take a good job do a good job and take your time with skinning your animals. And if you're not able to skin them, um, you know, start to be picky about the hides you get. I think if you're still learning, it's good to just take what you can. Um, and then impress upon the people that provide you hides, ask them to do a good job skinning. Uh, I did that with my brother um, and my other, my other brother who skinned a hide this fall, actually, and my brother's partner. Um, and they did really beautiful jobs, you know, we impressed upon them that we wanted these hides whole and that we wanted them skinned well and they're skinned so well and beautiful and that's going to be a really gorgeous hide. I'm losing daylight so before that happens I want to be able to show you what this looks like. Um, so if you've seen hide before, you'll have seen on the membrane side a really beautiful network of veins. Um, I'm not actually able to find any here. But that's kind of what my what I strive to when I'm scraping 
the membrane off is that I want to just expose the vein so I can kind of see the, the groove of them. Um, there might be a little bit of one, I'm not sure. Uh, and you don't really want to go much more than that. And the fact that I can't see any right now is making me wonder if I did go too much. I did scrape too much. There's some vein action happening here. Uh, one of my my mentors, um, my Instagram mentors, Richard Wesley, he shared with me last winter that he was taught to keep some membrane on because when you use it for, you use the hide for mitts or mucklocks or hats, the membrane acts as a wind barrier layer, which is kind of just blew my mind. Um, but I haven't really worked with that yet. So I still, this is kind of, this is what I like to get to here. Okay, so here's what I got to. Um, I'm gonna keep going, but I'm losing light. So I'm gonna stop here. I think I'll conclude my scraping video um, with this. And when I'm done this, I'm done cleaning up the other side. I'm just gonna let it um, hang out in the snow or in the, in the cold, in the winter, and let it dry. You'll be able to tell, well, you can tell when it's dried, when um, it doesn't, it, it actually starts to look like, um, like suede, and it looks white. That's how I've been able to tell anyhow. So I'm gonna leave it at that. So thank you for watching all the way through to this, if you have. Uh, I might do more of these. I was really inspired to do it uh, because I feel like, Frost scraping is something that it works so amazing for me. Um, and I'd like other people to be able to try it and maybe they didn't know where to start. Uh, so this concludes my So You Want to Frost Scrape YouTube video. Thank you. Get your regrets. Okay, one more thing. I really need to stress that I'm just still learning this. This is maybe my third winter trying frost scraping. Um, and even in, when it comes to moose hides and deer hides, I'm still learning. Uh, I don't know anything really. Like I know stuff, but not, I think there's still so much more I can be learning. So I'm sharing with you in this video what I know as of today, uh, late December, 2020. And I might know more next winter. Uh, I definitely am learning lots about softening and I've only softened a moose hide uh, two pieces last fall, the last summer, and I realized I did not do a good enough job softening them. So I'm just learning, and uh, I really enjoy this. I think it's a beautiful activity. It's really important for me to be doing this for myself, um, for my son, uh, and then any other anyone else that I can help share this this with. Get your mugach.